let me run a simple linear regression and I say the number of affairs is a function of children and see here it says factor because it has it is a, a factor or a categorical variable and the word factor is is R specific um, which is basically saying that this is a categorical variable either or one zero so I click here and it doesn't have to be one zero it could be any variable I can take the number of children one two three four five and 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 have the ver have the model recognize it as a factor and I'll show you how we do it in a second so we have children we have the age we have education we have gender we have rating and religiousness and years married you just put in all these in the model and let's call it in your model one we run it and we get the answer here. We get a half decent fit of 11.9 to 12% and the model tells us that um, households with children, uh, individuals who have kids in fact are less likely to have an affair. Or not less likely, I misspoke actually. This is um, the continuous variable from 1 to 12. So households or individuals with children are would have 0.2 fewer affairs than those who have no kids. This is counterintuitive, right? Uh, this is not actually not counterintuitive. This is different from what we have here. Here it says that those who have children are more likely to have an affair. But I think that most people in the data set would have children. And we can scroll up to see. Yeah, about 430 out of 100 um, had fair. So therefore, that is the reason a, a large number of people responded with having kids. But if you were to control for other variables, and this is a very good example of saying all else being equal, all else being equal, you get a different answer. And the answer is that those who have children uh, would have 0.2 um, affairs uh, less than those with no children. However, the t value is, is very small and the p value is less than point, greater than 0 0.05. This is not a statistically significant coefficient. The higher the education, the more likely that you would have more affairs, but then this is statistically insignificant. Both these variables suggest and this education variable and the children variable, that they are not statistically different from zero. So having higher children, more uh, having kids or having more education does not necessarily mean that you would have more or less uh, affairs. Age, on the other hand, is statistically significant, and you could see that the p value is less than 0 0.05. There's this star here to remind you that this is statistically significant coefficient, at least at the 95% level. And it says that the older you are, you would have fewer affairs, all else being equal. And males are likely to have 0.17 more affairs than females, but statistically insignificant. So gender has pretty much no impact on the number of affairs you would have um, as an, um, in this model, all else being equal. Now comes the question of rating. If you are, remember rating one being very unhappy in your marriage, five being very happy in your marriage, um, as you are, um, the higher value is associated with the negative coefficient, suggesting that those who are happily married would have fewer uh, uh, affairs. Now, when I say fewer affairs, and you are happily married, it only means that instead of having five affairs, you may have two affairs, right? Because that's all that this model allows me to explain. You see the problem with the linear regression model? This model allows me to explain it in these terms. If you are happily married, if your satisfaction with your marriage increases, you, are, you would have 0.7 fewer affairs than others. It doesn't tell me if you would have an affair or not, right? So the interesting variable would be if I were to transform it, the, the base variable, into yes and no. 
Again, those who are very religious, they are likely to have fewer affairs than those who are less religious. And these two variables, rating and religiousness, are statistically significant, highly statistically significant. And again, years, years married, with additional, with each additional year in your marriage, you're likely to have 0.17 more affairs, um, all else being equal. Or if you are married for 10 years, you would have 1.7 affairs, you know, 1.17%. And I want to recode a variable. I take affairs and I call it bin dot affair, bin dot f. And I say if it's zero, let's keep it as zero. If it's one to 12, let's call it one. Okay, so let's have this as one and let's do another one and call the other one multinomial affairs, M-U-L dot A double F. Zero, we keep it as zero. If it's one, keep it as one. And if it's more than two, then key code it as two. Four hundred and fifty one individuals said that they did not have an affair, and hundred and fifty one said they had an affair. Out of those, again the the other multinomial, four hundred and fifty one said they had no affairs. 34 said they had one affair, and 116 said that they had more than one, more than two or more affairs, or more than one affair. Right? So this becomes a multinomial categorical variable. Okay? So let's run a binomial logit. I go f uh, click on statistics, fit models, and I just select multinomial logit model because I can fit binary logit and multinomial logit using this. And I click on here, say uh, bin affairs as a factor variable, my explanatory variable, age, children, education, gender, rating, religiousness, and years married. And here's my model. And okay, first, first of all, age is statistically significant. Which suggests, the, if you look at the, the t-stat, which is the value divided by standard error, you would see that the, the increase in age is correlated negatively. So the odds of uh, having an affair decline with age, and if I look at it here, um, it's 5% decline. So with, with an additional year, if you get one year older, the odds of having an affair are 5% lower than, uh, than usual. Uh, similarly, um, if you look at children here, uh, not a statistically significant coefficient, but it suggests that the odds of having an affair are 46% more likely for a married individual with kids than an individual without children. Again, this is significantly different from what we learned using the uh, linear regression model, which suggested that having children uh, would lower the number of affairs you would have, but it didn't say you would not have any affair. It would say you would have fewer affairs, which is a so, you know, good compromise. But in the binary logic model, you get the, um, the answer. The odds of having an affair increases by 46%. However, notice that the coefficient here is not statistically significant. Education is also not statistically significant. Gender is not statistically significant, uh, but suggests that Males are 37% more likely to have an affair than females. Um, what is significant is rating, which suggests that the more uh, satisfied you are and happy in your marriage, um, with every one additional score, you know, in, in, in rating, and with additional rating in, 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 in your marriage, you are 38% less likely to have an affair. And as far as religiousness is concerned, which is also statistically significant, the T-star is significant, it suggests that you are 28% less likely to have an affair with an increase in religiousness. So all else being equal, those who are happily married 
and those who are religious are um, less likely to have an affair, all else being equal. And the coefficient for years married suggests that it's statistically significant. It suggests that uh, um, for an additional year in, in, in marriage, you are 9% more likely to have um, an affair.